Yo, it's Mr. G coming at you live. And we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing decimals today. Now, first, let's get into a couple key terms. We have dividend and divisor. So the dividend is always your numerator, or it's the number that's being divided, where the divisor is always the denominator, or the number that we're dividing by. Sometimes those are easily mixed up, so we want to make sure we know which is which. So we're going to focus on decimals. So first we'll start by multiplying decimals. Now here is a quick step-by-step -step for how to do it. But the biggest thing with multiplying decimals is that whenever you multiply decimals, you ignore the decimal. Like the decimal doesn't change the process of multiplication. So right here, I have 1.3 times 2.4. Yes, that's negative 2.4, but I know a positive times a negative is always negative. So there's my answer. It's going to go in right here. So that doesn't change the rules. Just because it's a decimal, our rules are still the same. Multiply times a positive times a negative, always negative. So we're already done with the negative sign. So I'm doing 1.3 times 2.4. That is no different than 13 times 24. The process for both of these problems is the exact same. The only difference is what we do at the very, very end. So like when I did 13 times 20, if I do 13 times 24 and I ignore the decimals, so I have four times three is 12, bring on my one, four plus one is five. All right, now we're gonna slide over, two times three is six, 26, and I get there we go, 312. So that's the same. The work over here is going to look the exact same. Like nothing's going to change because the process is the exact same. The difference is now in the very end, we just count how many numbers we have after the decimal. I have one, two numbers after decimals between the two values. So I move my decimal over one, two. So it's negative 3.1. And that's it. Okay, that's all we have to do. So the process is the exact same. So if you need to write it without the decimal, you can. Just don't forget to add the decimal later on. Okay, so if I had 1.95 times 0.4, notice that I wrote it in a different order. The reason why I did that is one, it's a lot easier to write the whichever value, whichever number we're working with that has more place values. We're going to put that on top and then the number on the bottom is going to have less place value. So it just makes it easier for when we multiply, there's less work for us to do. Also, there's no reason for me to write the zero down here. I could write it down. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. And we can multiply in any order we want. So let's make our lives easier by using the number with the most place values on the top, least amount of place values on the bottom. So when I multiply, we don't have to line up the decimals. That does not matter. Okay. I'm going to multiply as if the decimal's not there. So when I multiply, I'm just multiplying my values. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 9 is 36, plus 2 is 38. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. I know my answer has to be negative because I have a negative times a positive, so I'm going to write down that negative sign right now, just so I don't forget. Okay. And I'm already done that multiplication. So now it's the part where I actually have to deal with the decimals. Because I really just did, what I just did was 195 times 4. But now I've got to take place these decimals. I have one, two numbers after the decimal on my first number. One number after the decimal. So that's one, two, three values after my decimal. So it moves over one, two, three times. So it's negative 0.78. I can stop there. I can. I don't have to write the zero on the end because that doesn't mean anything. Negative zero point seventy eight or seventy eight hundredths. It's the same thing as seven hundred eighty thousandths. Okay, so that's for multiplying. Now for dividing. Dividing the process again with decimals. Pretty similar to without decimals. Okay, we have our step by step here. Okay, the biggest thing is making sure we set up our division correctly first. And then we move the decimal for the divisor, the number outside of the house. Okay, so we'll get to that one on our second example here. Okay, so for 2.5 divided by negative 5, the biggest thing is making sure we put the top dog inside the house. So that's really 2.5 divided by negative 5. So make sure we set it up correctly. Very, very, very important that the numerator is what goes inside as the dividend. 
Okay, so now I know I have a positive divided by a negative, so I'm going to reset this all over here. I have a positive divided by a negative, which means my answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to put that in my box so I don't forget it. I'm done with the negative sign. And now I actually have to do my division of 2.5 divided by 5. I don't need the negative sign anymore because it doesn't matter. Now, with division and decimals, once we have, I don't have a decimal on my divisor, so I don't have to do, I don't have to move my decimal around at all. When there's a decimal in the divisor on the outside here, we do have to start moving it around to get rid of it. But I don't have to do that because it's not there. So all I have to do is once I look to see, okay, cool, no decimal on the outside, then I'm just going to bring my decimal straight up from the inside. And now I'm just going to divide like normal. The biggest thing is keeping your work aligned. 5 goes into 2 0 times. I'm going to put that 0 above the 2 to show that 5 goes into 2 0 times. Now I'm working with 25. We can kind of ignore the decimal now. We've done our work with the decimal by bringing it up. 5 goes into 25 5 times. Notice how I put that on the right side of the decimal. The reason why is 5 goes, I'm working with this 5 right here. So 5 goes into the 25 5 times. So because that's the place, that's the value that I'm working with, I'm putting my 5 right above it. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0. I'm done. So it is negative 0 0.5 or negative 1 half or negative 5 tenths. Now, this second one here, it is important that we set it up properly. This is negative 3.6 divided by point 0 0.6. So that is negative 3.6 divided by 0 0.6. Make sure that this first value, this is like our numerator, this goes in the denominator. Okay. A negative divided by negative is positive, so I don't even need to deal with my negative signs. That part's already done. We're golden. Now, here's the big part here, is we have a decimal out here with our divisor on the outside. Okay. I cannot divide with the decimal on the outside. So what we do is we want to get rid of it. And we get rid of it by moving it until we don't have it. So if I move it over one time, it goes away. It's gone. Because 6.0 is just 6. So that's how we get rid of it. We move it over. But whatever you move on the outside, you have to move on the inside. So this is going to become 6 divided by 36. Now, if I needed to, I could then bring my decimal straight up right here. I'm not going to need to in the end because 6 goes into 36 six times, so I'm already done. And there's nothing remaining. So negative 3.6 divided by zero, negative 0 0.6 is 6. We have these decimals in both of our values, but the answer ends up being a whole number, which is totally fine. Okay. Quick joke for you. Where is the best place to do math homework? So where's the best place for you to do your math homework? On a multiplication table. Boop. All right. Moving on. A couple things to remember. Okay. Jot these down. When multi for multiplying, I want you to jot down what our main rule is for multiplying, and I want you to jot down what the main rule is for dividing. Okay. So what's your main rule for multiplying? What's the main rule for dividing? Something you can put, you should jot down something. Not Don't copy down just what I put. Put something good down here. Okay, something like count numbers, count numbers after decimal. Okay, whatever you need to put here to help you memorize or to summarize whatever we learned for multiplying decimals and then for dividing decimals. Also, you'll notice there are two problems for independent practice. Okay, please make sure you complete those. And I will check those once you guys get back to class. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. Gradius out.